Surprise. I'm sorry, Coco. I really am. When's the girl in? Oh, for my transfer. No, I. No, I was so cookie, so I decided to buy a new one. Oh, beggar, put your mattress work done. I want a little novel. Amy! Whom done on China get loyal? Yes, I want to know when I'm I'm tet. A commodo go to Oma, come to Sagan, beggar manje, who pelelep. Huh? La. Eh, good man, Salala. Eh? Good Salama, Sanya, la. Go, 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 There are so many stories in our country, in our continent. Why this specific story? Why this specific themes? Why did you feel compelled to, this, to, to tell this specific one? Yo. Um, where do I start? Um, well, like everybody who loves film, you know, you, you always want to look, you want to do something different. And I've seen the kind of trend of films that have come out of Africa, you know, whether it's you know, Nigerian or Kenyan or, or Senegalese or even South African. And I'm like, are we going to be able to make our films an export at some point? Are we going to be able to draw audiences into cinemas with the kind of films we'll be making? You know? So I kind of felt, you know, let's try, let me try something that's a bit out there, something that is, you know, that you, you don't normally see on TV, something that if I was to ask you to come to the cinema and watch, I'd probably say yes, because they won't show this film on TV. I can guarantee you that. But you know, in the cinema, maybe yes. And, and that meant you know, it, it could be just that kind of film. So it was really uh, in an attempt to try something different and see if it will work, if it will find a market, and if it will find an audience or a following. And also if you could travel outside South Africa, not just be a film that you know, can be consumed locally with the themes that are ours, of course, cultural, relevant, and all of that, but you know, a little bit of you know, grandma teaching ass and that kind of thing. So maybe people would love that thing. I don't know, it's an experiment. It's still an experiment, let me put it that way. Cool, let's see with, let's just see with the show of hands anybody who's got a question to ask. Okay, one, noted. Uh, okay, cool. All right, just as a follow-up question, we'll come to you now. As a follow-up question, we live in a country and in a society where we've seen how men have handled women, right? And I don't know if it's something that you, you from the onset, you went on to address, if you, you made a film to address the issues of sort of violence against women and some sort of uh, uh, power to the, to the female uh, uh, being. So I don't know if it's something that you thought out or it was as a result of the process. So, no, look, look, this script took me like two years to write. And at some point, it was an exercise in whether I really knew how to script write. I attended a workshop uh, a few, I think, uh, last year by the renowned uh, script writing guru, uh, a man called Robert McGee. And when he he basically, you know, taught us blah, 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 how to script write. So I went back to this script that I written a long time ago to see if I could actually, you know, uh, apply some of the principles of script writing. And then, of course, the themes that, I, that were very, very close to my heart and things that I thought were interesting, you know. I, I didn't want the film to be gratuitous, whether it had to do with the sex or the violence. It had to be organic, it had to be rooted to the context. And while we all know violence against women, it's common, and people have accused me for actually uh, celebrating it instead of condemning it in the film, which I suppose can be true in a way. <laughs> you know, so, but I, I know that there's just no how you can bring anybody's attention to something without pointing an arrow directly to it and say, look, this is it. If you want to make a film about drugs, you, you have to show people taking the drugs. You have to show the effect of that drug. So, so yes, that was a theme, you know, and also it was really also from the point of view of making the underdog the hero, the person who you least expect to come out on top when faced with tremendous odds, 
you know, that for me was a very big thing. The David and Goliath story, I love that kind of thing. The little guy, you don't see him coming, you think, ah, he can't do jack shit, and the next thing you know, you're dead, and he's standing up, that sort of thing. So, of course, you know, grandmother was the obvious choice, because nobody expects her to do that kind of thing. And her daughter, you know, just to keep it, you know, family-oriented, right? I'm hoping it's a family movie. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to ask, Rodney's psychopathy, which was very apparent and very creepy, how much of that was your characterization and how much of that was from the actor's point of view? Well, uh, the things that I, I've done a lot of TV drama for SABC and Mnet, and I'm working with, I work with actors a lot. And, and you know, I, I don't write. I'm not a writer. I, this was like, I think, the only script I've ever written in my life. So I don't really, I don't consider myself a writer. But you know, we always have to work with other people's scripts. And when we do, we always have these issues where they go, Ish, this is not working, there's something not right about this. And, and of course, often you have to like, you know, modify a bit, but when you do that, especially for TV drama series, it's, it's got a ripple effect on the storyline because you're doing episode one, two, three, four, up to even 52. So you have to be careful about what you change. And you know, you just have to stick to the script sometimes. Sometimes you have to modify it, but you have to be careful how you do it. Think about uh, movies about the Holocaust. Even though the Holocaust happened like close to 50 years ago, the films that have been made about the Holocaust are really very good, you know? So it's not like if Steven Spielberg wants to make another film about the Holocaust in 20 years, everybody looks forward to it because they're like, okay, what is he gonna come up with next? How is he gonna present this old story? And, and we've not been telling our old stories well. And, and I still think that somehow we need to go back there. We need to go back to, to our past and, and tell really cool stories. Okay, so, that's why I threw in a little bit about her being an MK ex-veteran. Because it's actually true. I know it's just a side thing in the film, but it's very important. And I'm like, this is how you can t tell stories about your past and relate them to the present. You know, just little sweet things that we tend to forget or we, don't, we ignore completely. So for me, telling, f making films like this that tie our past to our present are very important. You know, whether you're from Nigeria, whether you're from South Africa or Kenya, you know, if you, if you make a film that just exposes the past for past sake, I, it's, it's, a, it's an academic film, you know, and will probably be watched by lesser people than are here right now, <laughs> you know. But if you, if you, if you, if you, if you fictionalize it a bit and, and let your imagination run wild with what you know is your context, what you know is your history, your legacy, your past, then, then you've, 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 you've made a meaningful point or you've given insight into something that people already know, but you've given them a deeper understanding. A little bit just, uh, not, not, you know, well, you know what I mean, you know, a little bit more than what they, they're used to. So for me, it, this, is, that, this is the form. This is for me the genre. I remember somebody asked, so what genre is this? I said, it's, uh, it's Quata Camp Noir, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. But, uh, but for me, f uh, you know, stories about the squatter camps really, really are fascinating. And that's because when you do TV series, you shoot a lot in the squatter camps. And, and, and most of the times when you shoot there, it's about this poor old woman, her wayward son, the HIV issues, the teen pregnancies, everybody's trying to get by, money, money, money. It's always like, ah, oh, this is a place of where there's doom and gloom. But, you know, I was like, hi, man. If, if, <laughs> people that live there, when, you, when they walk out of that place to catch the taxes to come to work, you won't even know. You know, because they, 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 their lives are as full as can be. We, we have no idea. I, I'm not saying, you know, we should all go and live in shacks. But it, it's, it's, there, there is something to still hold your head up high about, you know, because you are making it work for yourself. And, and, and it's these little untold stories that I think we can use to populate our showreel as African filmmakers, you know, because the Europeans do it, the Mexicans do it, the, the Koreans and the Asians do it. Hell, the Americans do it. Why can't we, the Africans, start doing it? Sure. Awesome. Yes, there was one more over here. Hi, well done on the film, first of all. Um, sorry, but I've got two questions. The one is, what's pretty, I'd just like to speak about the red, which is obviously a, a choice to go with the red. And I noticed at the end, she was wearing orange, so I don't know if you can talk about that a bit. And also, um, the fact that you wrote the script and directed it. Um, people always say that, or not always say, but often I know that as directors, you end up changing the script. So did you find that you had to change the script? Um, how precious were you to the screen, to the script, 
Um, if you could just talk about those two things. Okay, Thanks. let me start with the, with the last question. Look, um, writing the script, as it, writing and directing, I discovered it does one thing. First, it makes you very familiar with the material. So that even when it changes, you know that it's changing for the better and changing to work for the point you're trying to get across by the end of the film. That for me is the most powerful thing about writing your own material. It's not that you, know, you hang on to it and say, no, don't change this. But if something has to change, then you understand how it impacts on your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your main subject matter. Now, in terms of things that changed, the original script was actually darker than this. It was actually even far more hectic, hectic than this. It, it really was. It was really, really dark. It was still funny, but it was dark. And I remember Malilian going, yo, I'd say, I don't think I can do this. There was a particular scene she could not bring herself to, to, to even do. And she's like, we've got to change it. I'm like, okay, you know what, we'll change it. But then what do we replace it with? And then we came up with something a bit more that worked. So there were those kind of negotiations about, you know, what we could, and what we could change and what we could, okay, let me, give, let me tell you specifically one example. In the scene where, the, where they come to the, uh, to the rubbish dump and the, the security guard asks for a blowjob, in the original draft, he, of course, uh, Agnes says no. And then the grandmother says, look, you did this for a living already. Why can't you do it for me, you know? <laughs> you know? So, and then that causes a whole, like, what the, f you, you're pimping me out, you know, that sort of thing. I was like, well, you know, it, you don't seem to have a problem with it, you know, just carry on. <laughs> you know, so there was, and, and Marlene was like, yes, there's no way, she, she wouldn't do that. And then I, like, I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe she wouldn't, but it doesn't really matter, it's not important. But, you know, we, we found another way of making it work. So. Like I said, it just gives you a, a, a more margin of being able to change things around and not feel like, like actually, and also in terms of execution, well, it was very, very low budget and also very short time span. So I could, I, could, I could shoot around the same location five times and nobody would know that we've been going around in circles. I could shoot with, without an actor being present and we did that a lot because they were not always there. So many of the scenes there that you saw, Actually, we shot over like two days where we had one side where Marlillian was there and we shot, 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 shot. And then next week we shot with the other actor when he was available. So there's a lot of those kind of things. And knowing writing makes you just very familiar with that, how you can work around your limitations more. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm preciousness, if it, if it makes the film better, I say go for it. And then about the red, well, the original name of the film was actually the reason why the red is there. And the original name of the film was Ashes of a Red Cow. And, and Red was a theme based on the title because, you know, well, there was a segment that we took out and, and Agnes' mother had actually, when she died, they couldn't even afford to bury her, so they cremated her and they put the ashes in the red cow that they were using to basically kill everybody. <laughs> so, so, but you know, like I said, we really were working on a tight budget, tight shadow. We shot over 10 days with, with, with little or no money. And at some point, we're like, you know what? Forget it. Forget about the ashes at that point. I mean, that doesn't make the story more meaningful. It just supports the name more than anything else. So that's where the red came from. And when we changed it to Go Helen, the red was still there. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the story behind the red. And, and the, so even the orange thing, well, by that time, we'd already changed the name. So by the ending, it didn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Azay Uga.